Hi, I'm Mark Ryan. Today I'd like to talk about a contrast between two high-level APIs that are available for doing deep learning, FastAI and Keras. I've been using Keras for a couple of years and I've started to use FastAI on a daily basis and I'd like to share some of my ideas about the similarities and differences between these two frameworks for doing deep learning. Before showing some code comparisons between FastAI and Keras, I want to talk a little bit about the high-level similarities and differences between the two of them. Now, they're both intended as high-level frameworks for doing deep learning. FastAI is built on top of PyTorch, and it has an emphasis on giving you fast results, even as a beginner, up to state-of-the-art results with just a handful of lines of code, and it's really optimized for that kind of result. It's also intended to make it easy to do customizations as your skills increase by providing a layered API that goes all the way down to the underlying PyTorch framework. It's the backbone of a series of very popular deep learning courses presented by Jeremy Howard, as well as the subject of a new book that Howard and Gugger put out in 2020 called Deep Learning for Coders with Fast AI and PyTorch. Keras is also intended as a high-level API for doing deep learning. It's built on top of TensorFlow. And since TensorFlow 2, it's been deeply integrated with TensorFlow. It's the official high-level API for TensorFlow and Keras libraries are distributed through the TensorFlow project. And it's really been the default platform for learning about deep learning. It's taught in dozens of courses, is the subject of over 20 books, and it's used by tens of thousands of developers all over the world, both to learn about deep learning and also to actually create production applications. To contrast the experience between Keras and FastAI, I went through the experiment of creating a very simple MNIST application in both of the frameworks. And on this page, you'll see the code on the left for Keras and on the right for FastAI to prepare the data set. So to import the necessary libraries and prepare the MNIST data set. Now MNIST is a bit unique amongst the oven ready data sets that these frameworks provide in that it's available in both of the frameworks, in both Keras and FastAI. So looking at these preparatory lines of code, you can see there really isn't that much of a difference. Now one difference that does occur is if you try to run this code in Colab, you'll need to go through the steps of mounting the uh, drive as a, as a file system for FastAI, whereas for Keras, you won't for MNIST. So that's a difference between the two of them. Now looking at the model training code, there is a bigger difference. On the left again is Keras, on the right is FastAI. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that there in Keras, we have to define each of the layers of the model individually. Whereas for fast AI, there is a single parameter ResNet that defines the architecture for the model. So that's a, that's a bit of a simplification that we get with fast AI. You can also see that there are just more lines of code on the Keras side. So there's a little bit more complexity. And the reason for this is that in FastAI, there's really an emphasis on making intelligent choices about the defaults for all of the items that need to be set. Now, looking at some of the pros and cons of FastAI, you can get a pretty complete solution for about five or six lines of code. Now, in the case of MNIST, the difference between Keras and FastAI, is, FastAI isn't that great. But for other applications, it's really quite remarkable what you can do with a very small number of lines of code in FastAI. By picking intelligent defaults and making clever built-in optimizations, you can get, in some cases, really good results, close to state-of-the-art, essentially out of the box, which is really great for somebody who's learning about deep learning because you get to the point where you're seeing results very quickly. Because of the layered architecture I mentioned earlier, there's room to grow from being a beginner to an expert. So as you unfold deeper layers of fast AI, get closer to PyTorch, you can continue to grow in a fairly smooth way. 
It has a really big suite of convenience functions for data preparation, for example, getting rid of missing uh, data values and also examining the data set. There's some really great convenience functions, for example, for examining uh, image data sets. And there's a big set of curated data sets. There are over 25 of them for fast AI and there are seven for uh, Kara. So that's a big difference. On the con side, fast AI has a smaller community than Keras. So a lot of people have been through Jeremy Howard's course. I'm sure a lot of people will read the book. The book is excellent, uh, but that's still, it's still a smaller community of people than there is for, uh, for Keras. There are limited examples of implementations in commercial production. So uh, Keras has been around for uh, at least in its current instantiation for a longer period of time since 2015. And there are certainly examples of it being used uh, in industry. And then a final uh, con for fast AI is the documentation is quite inconsistent. So there are certainly cases where you need to go and examine the source code to understand what's going on. There are cases where the documentation is, is, is pretty scanty. And that combined with the smaller community than there is for Keras means that for some problems, it does take some time to get them resolved. Now, looking at the pros and cons of Keras. So Keras, as I mentioned before, has a huge user community. There are many examples of it being deployed in commercial production. It's had a consistent and orderly evolution. Uh, fast AI has been through a number of changes. In fact, the first fast AI, fast AI course, when I took it back in the end of 2017, it was indeed based on uh, TensorFlow. And there have been a couple of generations of it being of the framework being based on top of PyTorch until the current framework. I expect with the book that's come out last year that it's going to be more consistent now. It's going to sort of settle down. Uh, Keras has excellent documentation. So the, the documentation that's provided through, uh, through the Keras community is really very good. On the con side, I'd say for somebody who's starting from scratch with deep learning, you get to results faster with fast AI and it's simpler. So it is harder to get started with Keras. There are more knobs to manage, particularly at the beginning. Uh, because of the intelligent default choices that fast AI makes, it makes things a bit simpler. And then I'd say there's, bi there's a bigger step function between Keras and TensorFlow in terms of complexity. The integration between Keras and TensorFlow as of TensorFlow 2 helps, but there's still a bigger jump to make than there is through the kind of uh, gradual, graceful uh, uh, way that fast AI opens up the API and makes more things available before you get right down to PyTorch. And that's a very quick high level summary of some of my observations so far on the differences and common points between Keras and FastAI. They're both excellent frameworks. And uh, you know, I'd encourage anybody who's learning about uh, deep learning to investigate both. They have their strengths and weaknesses. And I hope this video has been useful in understanding what those are. Thank you.